Sorry, no camera there. Hey sailors, welcome to the crew. I'm Sealer Janda, and this is my Let's Play of Rule the Waves 3 as the United States. Uh, the year is July of 19... well, the, it's July of 1912. We have some four dreadnoughts in service, plus two battlecruisers. Only these three actually count as dreadnoughts, because the others only have six guns. We have another five battleships under construction as I speak, which... One of them is a slightly improved Oregon with 10 12-inch guns. The Kentuckys have eight 14-inch guns and a thicker armor belt. So all in all, things are going pretty well. We're waiting on the completion of this Saratoga class design study, and then we're going to start building some uh, battle cruisers for ourselves. A heavy cruiser design and wholesale replacement of more of our destroyers is in order. I have been informed and realized that these destroyers have mines, which is sort of pointless, but um, I'm not going to correct it on that design because, well, it won't kill us, but it's not ideal for a destroyer. Uh, but I won't correct it on that design because we have 1,100-ton um, destroyers now which we can build. So for now, we're just going to do our best to avoid a war with Britain while starting a war with France. Hmm, the Navy is not a tool for increasing the steel industry's profits. Ballistic cap, AP penetration improvement, excellent. Compressed air supply, improved fuses, good, good. We are perilously close to that war. Are we building bases out in the Pacific? I mean, we should be, but I can't remember if one's actually underway. Seems like not right now it's not. Let's work on that. We're going to need more capacity here for a war with Britain or with France, really. Probably we should get more capacity down here, too. Although this is 20 already, so that's a bit better. Yeah. More important to get more ships right now. Lots of ships being worked up. Alliance with Austria-Hungary, huh? Okay, sure. It should help against France, anyway. We have two allies now, aren't we, fancy? Ladder shooting, accuracy improvement. Struggling with diesel generators, struggling with triple torpedo tubes. Great. Improved compressed air supply, 5% submarine reliability, destroyer screens. Okay, we only need those because destroyers are getting perilously good now. Oh, we are. Uh, we could be at war with the UK at just any moment. They have a lot of ships, although they have less cruisers than us, which is just sort of stunning, really. But they have hugely more battle cruisers, which more than makes up for it. Especially since we're just about to finish this design study and, you know, then two and a half, three years lead time before we have any actual modern battle cruisers available. Uh oh. Oh, windfall and tax revenues, that's fine. Um, build some railroads. Okay, these are ready. I'm going to lay down two Saratoga class... Um, we can't actually afford that. I'm going to lay down one Saratoga class battlecruiser for now. I wish I could build more, but not while we're also building five battleships, it would seem. We'll have to wait for uh, Delaware to be completed, and then we'll be able to build another one, at least. Docks. Spy from France. I'm going to handle it discreetly only because what's worse than a war with Britain is a, worse, a war with Britain and France at the same time. Oh. Um, however, we will support Austria-Hungary with whatever comes, so that's maybe not going to work out. Oh man, France and Britain. That's an issue. I mean, we can beat France. It's a pretty even fight between us and France now, but we can definitely win it. Britain, however, terrifies me still. They have, you know, 
more than a third as much tonnage again as we have. We're not far from being able to fight Britain. I mean, just like 10 more years, and I would gladly fight Britain, basically. Gyro stabilizer. Ah, quality zero 14 inch guns. Great, we should rebuild all these ships that we're building right now. Okay, our tension with Britain is just off the charts. The war could absolutely start any turn now, basically, or literally. We are going to need bigger docks, but we can't actually afford it right now, so we're going to delay that a couple months. The German government is concerned. Um, they can't prevent us from fulfilling our manifest destiny. Okay. We will also support Japan, whatever comes. Oh, tension went down a little. But we're still perilously. I mean, it could just randomly start any turn, I'm pretty sure. We shall see. Okay. Um. Oh, God. This, I'm pretty sure, just has a random chance of either going really badly or going well. I'm going to try it. Oh, they've agreed. Russo-Italian alliance has expired. Didn't actually lower tensions, but it didn't start a war. So um, I'm going to have to pause this. Actually, I really want the uh, heavy ships. I'll just pause this light cruiser for a month while we get Delaware finished. Of course she does. Great. Well, the British, British Japanese, well, that helps, actually, because now at least Japan will just be on our side for sure if a war starts. Gradual improved AP penetrator alloys. Gradual AP penetration improvement. Still struggling with the triple torpedo mount, which is a terrible shame. Oh, my God, the tensions. All right. War is probably inevitable. At least we finished Delaware, but... She's almost use like being twenty knots where the whole rest of our line is twenty one knots is really annoying. She kind of needs like immediately immediately a complete rebuild just to actually get her up to twenty one knots, but that's really annoyingly expensive. We can't afford it while we're this close to war. The good news is if a war does start, we're about a year out from finishing the whole Kentucky class. And if we have them available, we have a much better chance of fighting Britain's dreadnought fleet. Which, none of them, well, okay, Anson here is about a match for the Kentucky class. All of these older ships are not. This whole Benbow and Empress of India class is dreadful compared to ours. Uh, can, compared to the Kentuckys, even inferior to the Oregons, really, not by much, but a little bit. Who do I have in reserve and mothballs still? Nobody terribly important, to tell the truth. Okay. Okay. That's going to cause us to go to war. Um... Austria Hungary calls on us to honor our alliance and join them in war with France. According to Clause 5C in our agreement, we are not obliged to help them in this situation. No. It's a matter of honor to fulfill our obligations, and if this kills the country, well, at least it'll be dramatic. March of 1913, the USA and France are now at a state of war. Japan has honored its alliance. Did Japan have a separate alliance with Austria-Hungary, or was that their alliance with us? Okay. The USA and Great Britain are also now at a state of war. We just started World War One, everybody. And for some reason... For some reason, World War One is us, Japan, which... 
Where is Austria Hungary on this? Oh, there it is. Oh, they do have a separate alliance. Okay. So for some reason, World War One is the United States, Japan, and Austria Hungary versus Britain and France. None of them share any form of land border, so it will be a war fought entirely at sea. Okay, I'm immediately checking on uh, those two things. I am laying down a second Saratoga. Do we already have a Lexington in service? We do. Okay, that's a shame. I'm laying down a second Saratoga while we have the funding. Oh, we don't have the funding anymore. Why didn't we have... We had the funding literally seconds ago. Okay, I'm immediately pausing that. And... Then we've got to figure out what we're doing with the whole damn fleet, basically. So this force... Gets to be fourth a battle division. Um, all of them, because they all should make 21 knots, even though Delaware doesn't, but we can't afford to spare the firepower, so. Okay. Now, I guess before I do anything further here, where are we prioritizing our forces? I think we have to have most of our fleet on the east coast here. As you can see, Britain also has a lot of ships here. And until, unless and until we can knock them out of these three possessions, they're just an existential threat to blockade us at any moment, which is disastrous. Would be disastrous. Other than that, we're going to have a few forces in the Caribbean. Maybe some pre-dreadnoughts and such. And we're going to have some armored cruisers and such head to Southeast Asia and the South Pacific. Maybe I should have something here, too, just in case, you know, British Columbia. So much stuff Britain has that would be good for us to have, but so difficult to take. Okay, Delaware is still working up. We do have two battle cruisers on the East Coast. They just both suck. Um, the Omahas are our older... Yeah the oldest of our three classes. We're going to take them out of reserve. But we're going to send them all to the Caribbean. Along with, say, this one 500-ton destroyer that's here and a whole gaggle of 600-ton destroyers. And a couple of older armored cruisers, maybe. Yeah. Oh, whoops. The Caribbean. Is everybody organized? Battle cruisers, well, actually, battle cruisers would be if I just bothered to tell this one to go to the battle cruiser division. Okay, battleships are all organized. Armored cruisers are organized. I think, hmm, we probably need to keep the San Diegos on our coast. We need to pull all the Pittsburghs out of mothballs very quickly. The ones that are on the west coast, I'm going to tell them both to proceed to... Southeast Asia and see what kind of impression they can make on the British there. We have one Olympia in the Caribbean. Two on the West Coast. That's actually like... I should probably recall at least one. I'm going to send one of them to uh, the South Pacific actually. See if she can achieve anything down there. These two are our primary scout cruisers for the fleet, so we're keeping them here. We have the whole Drayton class on the west coast, so that's fine. I mean, they're our oldest, but they'll have to do. Hmm. Okay, that's getting hard to keep track of. I think that should be fine for now. 
sent a couple of cruisers each to Southeast Asia, or one couple to Southeast Asia, one to the South Pacific. We should have strong fleets ish on all of our critical coasts. We pretty much need to immediately target mm, New Brunswick is the more logical target, I guess. Just immediately target New Brunswick. Mm, that's going to have us be bankrupt, even though we're at war. So that's unfortunate. I'm going to pause a light cruiser again. Now let's take a look at exactly what Britain has. Battleships. We have to be terrified of their numbers, but not their strength exactly. They have two of these Empress of India classes, which have basically a six-gun broadside, the same as our older dreadnoughts. And an 11.5-inch belt. They have, what, uh, seven of these Benbow class, which are... They have... Theoretically, an eight gun broadside, but only at the very precise angle for cross deck fire. Uh, and the nine and a half inch belt is weak. Uh, then they have Anson. Anson is the one to be terrified of, right? Faster than any of our dreadnoughts at 22 knots. Five twin turrets for 10 14 inch guns. 11 and a half inch belt, only marginally less than us. This can kill any Dreadnought in our fleet. It can probably even kill the Kentucky-class Dreadnoughts that aren't even finished yet. Even though they're heavier than it. I don't know how that happened exactly, but yeah. It's just the armor, I think. Uh, the battle cruisers, however, however, one for one, we can fight anything of the Dreadnoughts except for Anson. What I'm more terrified of is these battle cruisers. They have five in... Okay, five incomparable class with eight 12-inch guns apiece. Now, cross-deck fire being what it is, at a lot of angles it'll only be six, and the five-inch belt is quite weak, but our two battle cruisers, although they have thicker armor, are slower and have weaker armament, practically speaking. I really don't know why I went with six-inch guns on that. That's weird, but... Uh... It was just to try to make up for only having six 12-inch guns, but it's not really going to. Those need a whole big refit to be really worthwhile. And then they have the whole New Zealand class of another six here, which is different in that it has five-inch instead of six uh, four-inch secondaries. And an inch and a half extra of belt armor. So this is pretty much straightforwardly superior to our battle cruisers. They're not... Well, let's put it this way. If they're still fighting us in two plus years when our Saratogas are finished, the Saratogas will make mincemeat of these cruisers, uh, battle cruisers. But until then, we've got trouble. Now, pre-dreadnought-wise... I think they've decommissioned... Yeah, they've decommissioned every one they built before 1897, actually. They have oops, one Caesar class left, Bulwark. Decent, but very thinly armored. Five Venerable class, which I see have three 13-inch guns in a really weird layout. Not too worried about those. Four Glory... Cl okay... Four Glory class, which have 13-inch guns. Pretty weak on the armor, but good secondaries. They have Vengeance, which is a pretty... Well, actually a very thinly armored, but otherwise standard pre-dreadnought. Three Montagues, which are mm, quite a lot tougher. And their latest are six Exmiths, which have big 8-inch guns and everything. These are probably... They're still a little thinly armored, but they're probably a match for pretty much anything pre-dreadnought-wise that we have, so this is going to be a heck of a fight. Now, where they are lacking is their armored cruisers, and their light cruisers especially. Their armored cruisers, they have... These three suffixes are heavily armed, but really... Not as well armed as any of the ones mostly that we have in service, and thinly armored. Actually, that's not that bad, right? Ours have only... Yeah, 
Ours only have a four inch belt, the older ones. I mean, the San Diego's would pretty comfortably beat those, but not the rest. And then these latest things, the Devonshire. Well, to be fair, these latest things have no big guns, but they have so many medium caliber guns and a really thick belt. Our best chance is probably to run away from these, honestly. Uh, light cruiser wise, these are a joke. That's not a light cruiser, that's a large destroyer. Um, it's not even large by like, I mean. There's destroyers built in about 1930 that are have got more firepower than this. <laughs> this is a very powerful light cruiser, however. This will probably, probably rip apart any of ours. They do have a lot of 300-ton destroyers in service still, making up a big chunk of that force of 65. Oh, yeah, wow. Oh, no, 112. Still, though, our 70 are heavier than their 112, so we do have much better, heavier destroyers on average. They, oh yeah, they only have a handful of 6 and 700 tonners. Almost everything they've got is... Honestly, it's not even that many 500 tonners. Most all of them are three or 400 tons, which are very flimsy. Uh, France is another story altogether. They've got... six dreadnoughts, of which four are this Bouvet class. These are... Well, they're 11-inch guns, so they're a little thin, but or a small, but they've got eight of them to a side, albeit I can't even imagine the weight compromise made there, but somehow they've got 11-inch belt, too. It's their speed that's slow. And then this Patri class has 10 guns to a side, actually. Thin armor, but 10 13-inch guns to a side, so that's quite nasty. And they have for a Charles Martel class of 30,000 tons building. Good news is, battle cruiser wise all they have is these two Dunkirks. The cross-deck fire, I mean, they're better than our battle cruisers still. Not invincibly better, but better. I'm not too terrified of any of these pre-dreadnoughts. They do have some of them very thick armor. But, like, this one is horribly lacking on secondaries which is important for a pre-dreadnought. This one isn't, unfortunately, though. But then all of the others are again, so... Yeah, we'll see. We'll have to play it by ear. We might be desperately trying to piece out right away. I mean, we do have... Uh, Japan and Austria-Hungary are on our side, we can't forget. But Japan has only three dreadnoughts of its own completed, and none of them are terribly big. These only... Oh, these actually do have eight guns to a side. Classic Dreadnought design. Same as this. They're building some large battle cruisers and some larger Dreadnoughts at a high rate, and allegedly they'll have two of them done this year, but uh, the aid Japan can give us is a little bit limited. Their cruiser force is almost non-existent. They have four cruisers total. Austria-Hungary... Austria-Hungary, oh, they have this sort of design that has six turrets in order to bring four to bear. Not fast, either, for a Dreadnought at all, but they are in coastal waters. Might not be terrible. Cairnton. This is as bad as our battlecruisers, so that's... not. A, it's actually worse than our battlecruisers from a weight perspective, and it's slow, too. Yeah. Well, Japan and Austria-Hungary will try their best, but we're fighting most of this war ourselves, honestly. Oops. Um, we should put... Oh, yeah, do we have anything not mobilized? Not really. I mean, I think... Now that we're at war, I can take all these off foreign stations, but... I think it doesn't really matter as long as they're... Oh, no, they do have to be out there, apparently. Um, okay, I'll just keep them all on foreign stations. and they're They're very not helpful. I mean, they're not what I'd prefer to have fighting in modern combat, so... I'm going to put about half of these onto trade protection. We need some on the west coast, just for actual fleet escort, and then half of these on trade protection or so, and that'll just about cover that. Should be way more ASW capacity than we really need. Nobody has large. I mean, Britain and France have a combined total of 30 submarines. 
We have zero, or we have one, actually, but uh, I've never found them to be terribly useful. And immediately a cruiser action on the east coast off of New Brunswick. Well, let's see how bad it is. Oh, hey, our destroyers are laying minefields. That's uh, something, actually. Considering I put the mines on accidentally, but uh, I'll take them. Thanks for watching, sailors. I hope you enjoyed the video. New parts should be up daily, or you can watch live on Twitch. If you did enjoy the video, consider leaving a like or subscribing. This is Sea Lord Janda, signing off.